Hello everyone. It's been about six, six months since I recorded anything about shuttle mode, but I'm gonna do something today in response to a conversation that's been happening online. Some people have been having trouble using stealth mode, getting it to work at all. And I've been pretty successful with it. So I was helping people online and uh, the differences between stealth and shuttle came up and what what parameters are necessary for both of them to work. So I saw something in the owner's manual that I wanted to clarify for myself because I don't really know. So basically for stealth mode, you can drive up to 45 miles an hour and the outside temperature as read by the car has to be at least 50 degrees Fahrenheit. For shuttle mode, you can only drive up to 15 miles an hour and the temperature can be as low as 14 degrees Fahrenheit. And the reason for that is that it's really just made to move your car around your garage in the middle of winter. But an interesting thing that the owner's manual says is that in shuttle mode, which we're in right now, if you go at up to 15 miles an hour, at 15 miles an hour, shuttle mode automatically deactivates that's what it says well what does that mean automatically deactivates i don't know what that means so we're going to find out right now oh look at that it just quits giving you power okay It doesn't start the engine. Stealth mode starts the engine automatically when you hit 45 miles an hour, but there's no way really to go directly from shuttle mode to the engine running. And that just shows it. I already knew that, I just didn't know. Does it leave you dead in the water? That, would, that wouldn't make any sense, so. All right, so it allows you to go at 15 and then I could clearly feel the battery power just cuts out. Yeah, yeah, it just, it, it just cuts out. Okay. Well, that answers that. And now I wanna show you something with the convertible top which also works in shuttle mode. One thing I don't think I've seen anybody talk about in any YouTube video about the C8 Corvette is how the convertible top requires six different electric motors to make it work. So let me give you an idea of what that looks like. Now when it gets to this point, it basically has just raised the tonneau cover and you can see there's very similar gearing on both sides of the engine cover of the HTC. So I don't know exactly where the motor is down there, but I assume there's a gear, there's a motor on each side in order to raise the tonneau cover. And then these nacelle covers right here, one on each side, are activated by a pulley system. And there's a motor right down here that pulls on the pulley system. So that's two more motors. And then there's two more motors, I assume, to finish the folding of the top. So let me show you what that looks like. I'll put it down the rest of the way.
Very cool, right? You can do that from outside the car, even by either by pushing the button on the door or by using your key fob. You cannot put the top back up with the key fob. You have to use the door switch. Again, keep in mind all this is happening while I'm in shuttle mode. The engine isn't even running, but the convertible top still works. And I'm gonna put the top back up from the perspective of sitting in the car. Here we go. You can see in the rear view mirror, the tonneau cover go up. And here comes the top. Here's another view showing how the convertible top works. I'm using the door button because you can't put it up with the key fob. There are six electric motors that make this happen. So the first two take care of lifting the tonneau cover. Two of them bring the convertible top up and two of them take care of putting the nacelle covers away. And there you go. That's the full procedure. Well, the full procedure is then all the windows go up too. And so that would be three more electric motors <laughs> if you include the windows. Hear that? That's the government mandated sound that they use when you're driving in a mode without the engine running. Farewell until next time. It's in the 30s, but I was able to start in stealth in my garage. What I'm wondering is, as the car recognizes how cold it is, is it going to kick the engine on? I don't know, let's see. I'll kick it on myself before I get out to the main road if I need to, but because I need to get up to speed. But I want to see what this does. Interesting. I didn't think I was going to be able to put it in stealth because it's clearly not 50 degrees out. Well, the car, <laughs> the car is reading it as 55 degrees, but okay, 54. It's really in the 30s. So let's see what happens. Let's just sit here for a minute and when that gets down to 50 or 49, I'm betting the engine will kick on because the parameter is it's got to be 50 as determined by the car. That's one of the parameters, one of the very many parameters. I'm still waiting. It just went down to 52. It's early morning and I wanted to spare my new neighbors the sound of me firing up my V8 engine inside the garage. And that's why I did this to begin with. They like cars, they said it's not a problem, but it's early in the morning and um, the sun's not even up. I'm on my way to film a whole bunch of Corvettes. The temperature's dropping. Okay, there's 50. So 50 is the minimum. What will happen when it hits 49? What will happen? Will the engine start automatically? 49, nothing. Wow.
That's unexpected. 48. Maybe once stealth is engaged, the temperature isn't as important. That's really interesting. 47. Okay. I've waited long enough. I think that that answers that question.